Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Greta, Whew, and I have a fun list for you today. I know you have been asking, I get it in the comments all the time, what's your top three men's fragrances? What do you like on a man? I do have a male audience that is increasing, so I wanna make sure that I address you. I do have a lot of incredible men's fragrances, um, and I know what I like on men. I mean, I've bought some of these for the men around me at work or friends just so they'll wear it around me. Like, please wear these around me because I love them on your skin. Uh, but these are my top 15 on a guy this winter, and some of these are new, and I'm like madly in love with them. So stay tuned for that. Okay, I'm gonna get started with this first one here. I have really been a fan of this one for a long time. And it is Creed's Green Irish Tweed. I don't have a full bottle, obviously, because I don't wear it myself. But I love smelling this and I love like spraying this on friends when they're here hanging out because I'm mad in love with this one. I do love Creed Irish Tweed and kind of want to bottle this myself. Um, <laughs> notes on this one. I have to laugh because I don't care what Fragrantica or anyone else says, it gives me this. It totally gives me Irish spring vibes. How to laugh because I went all around the house. I'm like, I know there's a bunch of these soaps everywhere, but like every box has this going on. I don't know what that's about. I had to say to my mother, my elderly mother that lives with me, I'm like, mom, what's up with the ends missing? And I noticed there was no UPC code because I'm like, are we like are you like submitting for a rebate or something? Or was it like on discount where they rip the UPC code off? I'm like, what's going on here? Like, why is every box open like this? And she said, well, I like the smell of it. It smells good and I want the smell in the bathroom. <laughs> so I'm just dying. So, but my point being that, yeah, these smell really good. They have this like shower fresh scent, but lasts all day. And it, it really is, reminiscent of this, but in the most luxurious niche fragrance kind of way. Like, it's kind of offensive to call it a bar soap, but I've always liked Irish Spring, like for decades. How long has this been out? I mean, this has been out like as old as the like hills. This has really been out a long time. Green Irish Tweed is coming in at number 15. Number 14. 14 and 13, people like to compare to each other. They're not the same. Um, I really, really wanted a Zerdoff on this list because you know, if you know my collection, I have like almost all of them. I'm a huge Zerdoff fan. I landed on Old Faithful Naxos. Naxos is your tobacco honey fragrance. It does have, um, it, it opens with a little bit of citrus and lavender giving it that masculine kind of hint. The honey and tobacco come through right away and some vanilla and cinnamon, but it's really known as that tobacco, honey, tonka bean, vanilla fragrance. Masculine, wonderful in the fall and the winter. Uh, you can't go wrong. It's a mass pleasing fragrance that everyone seems to like on a man. You don't have to worry about it being so niche that certain people's nose just isn't acclimated to it. This is a winner. You will always smell amazing with Naxos on. Number 13 is Uniki Luxuries Beverly Hills Perfumery Exclusive. Because it has tobacco and honey, everyone wants to say, oh, does it smell like Naxos? I have them both on this list specifically because of that. No, they do not smell the same just because they both have those two notes in it. This one is lighter and sweeter, almost fresher. But yes, it does have tobacco in it, but it's more like a fresh tobacco, whereas in Naxos, it's this like, it's a burned tobacco to go into like a pipe or a cigarette or something like it's that, which is burned tobacco. This is like a fresh tobacco plant. It's got like a floral aspect to it, whereas Naxos is deep and rich and spicy. 
and really he Naxos has like a heavy syrupy honey to it. This is more like a honey syrup kind of like watered down as if like you had honey in your tea, the way it's watered down and, and more syrup than like goopy syrup covering it. So they're very different. This is, the Beverly Hills exclusive is lighter, airier, floral, a fresher tobacco, which I really like. This is wonderful. This is wonderful. This is more daytime to me because of that. It's also more year round because of that to me, but I really, really like this one. Number 12 is newer to me and I put it on my guy's skin and I was like, are you kidding me? That smells amazing on you. Like, whew, talk about like the difference of chemistry. And it's by Argos and it is Baccio Immortal. And I love that name, Immortal Kiss, like with Valentine's Day and like, look at like Eros on here, I think it is. This one is so overlooked. Like everyone talks about Bacchus or the newest release and people flew past this one. <sighs> this is a leather fragrance. Um, there's also Bravido Delicaccia, which I really like a lot too. That's a little bit more of a earthier, dirtier leather. I was torn which one to put in this list. I went with Baccio Immortal. Um, it's a, it's a fancy leather. This is, <sighs> the leather in here is like a fine leather goods kind of leather. And it's like the guy in the $200,000 sports car, but he's wearing a leather jacket, fancy glasses. On his, on me, I get too much leather. Leather does tend to pull a lot on my skin and it'll, it'll just trample other notes in a heartbeat. On his skin, oh my gosh, it was so good. I, it opens fresh and there's this pink pepper, but I really get the leather, but with him on his skin, it blended, it must be that mate tea, but it's, it blended so nicely with that vanilla and leather and gave this almost woody kind of feel to it. The musk in there, like the musk blended with the leather and the birch is in there giving it some depth, but I really got like all these different dimensions on his skin, yet it just blended so nicely with the skin and it just gave this gorgeous masculine sexy musky leathery kind of feel to it that was just it was so good um but it smells divine on his skin Whew. yeah i think that oud gives a little bit of that woodiness in there so it's this like oud woody but it's not like a, the oud is a very pleasant Classy oud, so it's this woody, leather, musky fragrance that was really, really good. Guys, let me stop for a second here. If you like this kind of list and you wanna see more, give me the thumbs up and hit the subscribe button. It helps the analytics, it's free. But let me also tell you, do you guys know that, I don't know when that you're gonna see this, but we're about a week from Valentine's Day. I know some guys are procrastinators. They're not too good at thinking about these things, but I'm here for you. So I have for you a discount code for Roses Forever. I received this, this is three dozen, this is 36 roses. I received this between two to three months ago. I received this in November and it still smells amazing. When I received it, it was beautiful fresh roses. You can still see that they're pliable and fresh. They're a, they're a touch more brittle than when I first received them, but I'm stunned that they still smell fresh and soft and are amazing. This is not a new concept. Apparently my elderly mother was like, yes, we would do all these things to preserve our roses. Well, they're doing it for you. And I have a discount code. I don't get anything off this. I did reach out to them and say, hey, do you guys have a discount code for my guys? So Greta25 will get you $25 off. Um, I'll put the link down below. I, it's, I don't make anything on that. It literally is just to get you guys a discount code. I'll tell you, um, I cringe when it comes to men getting me a Valentine's bouquet because I know how excruciatingly expensive they are on Valentine's Day. And it kills me because they also die 
a week later and I'm sitting there trimming them every day, changing the water every day, watching them dwindle away as I'm like trimming it away. And it breaks my heart because I know they were an absolute fortune. Whereas I have been loving this bouquet for, th for three months now and it'll last a year. Um, it's real flowers that they treat to preserve them. You don't have to do anything to it. It comes in this hat box, so it's also really easy to transport. It's not like this big vase and bouquet that they're trying to strap in with a seatbelt. Or if you're using mass transit, not fun. You know, if you live in a big city, there's mass transit and it's a nightmare transporting these. So it comes in black velvet. You can choose the color flowers. You can choose the color box. You can choose the shape box, all of that. Um, if your girl's picky or your guy is picky, you don't have to worry. It is vegan, gluten-free, keto, paleo, whatever, whatever they're on. You don't have to worry with this. She's on a diet. They all love roses. It is all of that. So um, think about this, guys. And you can have this shipped and oh no, I'm going to leave it this way. Think about this. It's an incredible option. And I actually asked for this myself for Valentine's Day because I really was shocked at the quality and I, I don't get sick to my stomach knowing they just spent a few hundred dollars on a bouquet that's gonna last a week. And if you're saying that you don't have a girlfriend or a wife to send to, don't forget your mother because you know, maybe she doesn't have someone sending her roses and you'd probably really, really, really make her weak. The next one is by Parfums de Marley and it's Carlisle. This has always been one of my favorites from Parfums de Marley. I don't know why more people don't think it's their favorite. I love this one on a man. I think it is so classy. This one has a little bit more sweetness to it, but not overly sweet, like a sweet and spicy kind of aromatic. There's a little bit of like earthiness to this, yet it doesn't get too earthy or dirty. To me, it's a more fresh kind of version of that sweet, spicy, aromatic. And the sweet, that nutmeg in here just gives this like creaminess to the sweet and spicy versus a sharp sweet and spicy. And the vanilla and tonka bean is so smooth in here. I really like this one and it lasts on a guy and it just smells so classy and sexy on a man to me. I really like Carlisle. Number 11 is newer to me and I was really shocked at how good it was that it prompted me to want to go get discovery of the rest of the house. And this one is by George Zaharoff, Zaharoff Signature Own. So originally he came out, like it was a design house that he then came out with a fragrance in 1994 for Parfum and then in 1999 Parfum, which through the whole like, fiasco he went through, changing hands of who owns what company, buying, selling different parts, yada, yada, okay? Back to having it and wanting possession and wanting to release a fragrance again. He hunted high and low for this formula because through all the changes of hands, it was lost. So he went to the same perfumer who's Claude Deer and together they reformulated it to be as close to the original with I think a little bit more modernization to it and he came out with that in 2018. This one opens with, uh, I definitely get that coriander and lavender and some pepper and some kind of like green trees, giving this beautiful, classy, aromatic mint. Like it just smells like a classy man to me. A man that's put together. He may be in casual clothes, but they're like designer casual clothes, but it's a guy that's just always polished and put together, which makes sense because that's totally George. He's just always put together with some kind of style that this guy could be wearing a long sleeve t-shirt and jeans and some cool shoes. And he's just polished. He just, his hair is in place and he's got cool glasses on and he's wearing this. I really like this fragrance. I'm a big fan of balsamics and I think he's got like a mixture of balsamics in here like fir and blue cypress. Um, he's also got some depth in here with like the myrrh and the frankincense. There's also a clean smell to this. There's there there's this undertone of like freshly, it's like the freshly showered 
perfectly spritzed man. Definitely a clean undertone in here, which I really, really like. Almost like a, a creamy soapiness to it. And then with those balsamics, it could be the like balsamics in there giving that fresh freshness to it. But I really, really enjoy this. And I am waiting for the rest of the collection. I really want to get my hands on them now and try the rest of the collection. I will definitely let, let you know my thoughts on them. But um, big kudos, George, on this one. And... It's designer prices and really affordable, but smells like niche and he definitely has niche style, but this is technically designer. He's started as a design house. So, um, and I think he now has like crossbody bags. He's like billfolds coming out. He's got, you know, some more from the design house coming out. So really liking this one. And yeah, I'm looking forward to getting some more. Top 10, number 10, I've actually had for a while. And it's by Raja Dove, who you know I love, and I have a monster Raja collection too. And it's A Midsummer Dream, which this is named for the Shakespeare A Midsummer Night's Dream. It was shortened just for the name of the bottle. It was shortened for that. Um, the vibe I get from this is not really the inspiration that Raja had. It's supposed to be like, you know, the frolicking about outdoors and the craziness of that play, The Midsummer Night's Dream by Shakespeare. But what I get is that perfect fragrance of you had a you had a rough workout or you went on like a three hour hike and you've been sweating you're exhausted you come home you take a shower and that amazing chill feeling that you feel after absolutely exerting yourselves and then the fresh clean satisfied feeling of after a shower and you put this on and there's a freshness to it with that powderiness that just gives this nice relaxing spa kind of feeling but fresh and clean that I really like. It opens very fresh and citrusy like most Rajas do, but it also has that like, it has benzoin in there, which I absolutely love. Raja uses a lot of orris root and it gives body to a fragrance and kind of like emanates this powdery feeling, which I absolutely love. I actually will wear this one I, and I've been wearing it a bunch this winter. I, I, I just find it very comforting. And some woods in here, like cedar, something fresh. Um, there's a little bit of mossiness in there, but to me, it's really that it's fresh, clean woods, like the cedars and the mosses and vetiver, which is also a very fresh wood. And then you have that orris and benzoin that kind of gives it this projection once it's on your body. It's not a heavy projection or a heavy veil. It is more light and refreshing, which is why I just find it so amazing after exerting and taking a shower or like you're just ultra dirty from something and you have like the best shower in the world. You could have just been camping or something. You come home and you take that amazing shower and you put this on and it just matches that mood so perfectly absolutely love Midsummer Dream. Of course, you can wear it more times than that, but that's just what I get from it. Number eight, again, from the House of Argos. This one is so wildly popular. If you haven't tried Argos, you really need to try Argos. And this is the Triumph of Bacchus. This one was a hit with the house and they've come out with even more, but this one has just gone down as one of their greatest. Ugh. This one is ambery and creamy and boozy. There's tobacco, there's vanilla instead of honey, but it has almost like a honeyed kind of feel to it because of that amberiness, but it has some tonka bean in there. This one is so good. It is different than the other tobacco sweet ambery fragrances that I have on this list, but if that is your jam, you really need this one in your collection if you like that kind of fragrance. This one has a little bit more of a floral kind of kick to it, giving it some brightness. Not quite as light as say like the Beverly Hills exclusive, but it also has those florals in there, giving it a little bit of brightness. It's not heavy like Naxos. The booziness in here is a rum. I like rum. And there's some fruits at the opening with so, you get, I get more of the peach than the green apple. So it gives like this hint and I think it goes so well with like the vanilla tobacco 
rum and then a little bit of peachiness to it, but it's more like when you're drinking a whiskey and there's these fruity nuances to it, it's not like this overt peachiness to it. Like girls are gonna be like, oh, a peach fragrance. No, it's more like this peachy hint the way you would in a really good single malt whiskey. Like you get those fruity tones. That's what this is and it's so good. You gotta get your hands on this. I'll put a link down below. Uh, I only know that you can buy directly from them. I don't, I haven't seen this in any, any distributors. Number seven, I don't hear people talking about enough. And, oh. The house, okay. So the house on this one is Les Indemodables. Everyone knows the Havan, Vinny, Vinny Havan, but you know what, Curtis Sheen, this one, uh, Leather of China, but you have to know China is known for their Osmanthos. So this is Osmanthos and Suede. This one is so good. This one is such a hidden gem. People don't know about this one. I got the discovery kit from this house and went through, and I mean, and this was just, it was so easy, my top two from that house. I actually, then they came out with a new one, and that was my third, which I'll be telling you about in another video, but so easily. I fell in love, and it is this suede, Osmanthos smells like apricot, so it's this like fruity suede. Sounds crazy, but I also find it very unisex. This smells really amazing on a woman as well as a man. So this one has a little bit of aromatics in it. It has some sage in it. And that osmanthos gives a little bit of like a lectonic kind of apricot to it. But it really is a leather fragrance and even the name, Cure de Chien, which is leather of China. And it's because of the Chinese osmanthos, which is where osmanthos is really well known to come from, just like a lot of flowers come from Grasse France. Osmanthos comes out of China. It has a little bit of floral to it also, but it's this like a floral fruity background. It's very well balanced that it's not heavy leather and it's not a heavy, it's not like a pronounced fruity floral either. It really balances them both so, so well that uh, that's why it works marvelously on men and women where it's not so fruity floral that it smells feminine and it's not so heavy leather that it smells a little too supple and for a man. This is so good. You got to get your hands on this. I know they have discovery kits. You got to try the Kritishin. It's, I'm telling you, this one's killer. Number six. So it's by BDK and it is Creme de Cure. So this one is the cream of leather. This one smells so good on a man. This one, it opens citrusy and peppery. You get that black pepper when it first opens. A Little bit of pink pepper, but it's really a lot more of the black pepper. And then that, that, and then you get this creamy suede that comes through with a woodiness to it. And the way this blends with skin is phenomenal. The way it just has this creamy blending with warm skin that is so sexy on a man. There's a lot of musk in here too, which again, that muskiness really blends nicely. This is this this is a sweeter version than Baccio Immortal. Um, this has vanilla in it too, but it's just a little bit sweeter and creamier where the Baccio Immortel, as much as my description sounds similar, that one is more of a woodier, even more masculine kind of um, scent to it, like a wo more woody and leather in that one, where this one, there's a little bit more of the vanilla in here, a sweetness to it, and a creaminess. Uh, there's two different kinds of musk and cashmere in, and they really, really give this like pillowy, like this creaminess to it. Uh, yeah, this one is incredible. I feel bad that I wrote it off as like, yeah, too masculine and just kept going. It was like, wow, did I miss the boat on that one? So now I really, really want a full bottle of this because I'm now appreciating this one and realizing how darn good this one is. Stinking good. Number five, I just recently got, and it is by Chanel Le Leon. 
It's so good. So it is a sweet, ambery, woody. Uh, you've got the that balsamic and patchouli in there that gives it that sticky, sweet woodsiness that I really like. But this one has a depth to it that Coromandel doesn't have. I think there's like an incense-y kind of thing to it. But they're along the same vein that if you like those Coromandel kind of woody patchoulis, you're going to like this one. It has labdanum, amber, and vanilla in it, which basically is just giving you that amber effect that can be pretty darn intoxicating. I love wearing this. Obviously, it's very unisex. It smells magnificent on a man, especially in the winter time. There's something so warm and sexy about this fragrance. And again, that musk, like musk, sandalwood, amber, patchouli, It's very, very good. It, it, again, it is similar kind of-ish to Cora Mundell. I feel like it's a little bit richer than Cora Mundell. But if you like that, you are going to like this. Very much so. Number four, you've heard me rant and love on this one, and is by Raja Dove, Creation E Enigma, um, the cologne parfum you can get these at a really reasonable price too which is why it ranks really high love green irish tweed hard to find at a good price he made this cologne collection to be more affordable and to reach more people and i just think this one is phenomenal there are if you like this other ones in the brand that i could recommend if you're looking to really dive into raja there's other boozy ones too but for the sake of this video you can't beat this. Like, I feel like every man should have this one in their collection. You just should. And when you get like a 20% off at Bird Dove Goodman or at Saks or something, it's a no-brainer. It is your boozy, creamy tobacco fragrance. It's warm and spicy, and it's definitely that boozy, creamy vanilla. Uh, which booze is in here? Um, cognac. I thought it was cognac. Cognac is in here, and it's just so so good um whenever i hug a guy wearing this i can't help but say my goodness you smell so good there's it's just sexy it's creamy it's inviting and i absolutely love this one on a man ah <sighs> the top three now truth be told i wrestled with this a lot i moved a few around the top five never moved they were the top five like i was just hands down these are the top five so that part was really easy for me Number three is another one I think just every guy should have in their collection. It's almost cliche and it's Leighton. I, I just bought a full bottle of this today. Leighton opens with this like citrusy, aromatic, green apple kind of thing in there, which not a green apple like light blue, but it kind of goes more with those aromatics in here. This one, oh man. This one's dry down is so stinking good. It is this like powdery, creamy, intoxicating. I will wear this one and I cannot stop smelling myself. In fact, let me spray some right now. Yeah, you definitely get a lot of that lavender at the opening. And that violet starts to come through and violet is what gives it that kind of powderiness that I love violet. And to see this done in a men's fragrance is so amazing to me. The way they did this. Yeah, see the violets coming through already. You have that cardamom and pepper that give it this spice that just keeps it really nice and masculine. The vanilla, the patchouli, and the oud give it this ground. They, it gives it that depth, that longevity that you're looking for. But that vanilla and violet, man, having that balanced with the spices and that patchouli and oud, it's just, mm, I love this one. There's a reason this is on every woman's list. So again, this one should be in every man's collection. That one and this one should definitely be in every man's collection. And just wait till I get to the next two. Number two is from Les Indemodables, 
If you don't know the Vani Havan yet, I mean, yes, they have the Kurdish in. I highly recommend those two from the brand. This one kicked to the curb, Tom Ford's Tobacco Vani. Um, it's also is what bumped Naxos further down the list because this one, wow, is so rich smelling. It's so rich and decadent smelling. It's not just your rum tobacco. It also has some cocoa in here, which gives it this richness and like rounded creaminess to it. It definitely, it's got this ambery feel to it. And again, it's vanilla, not, it's vanilla, not honey, which actually I, I like better than honey. I don't, I'm not a huge honey fan, but I love tobacco, vanilla, and this amberiness and the cocoa. There's a touch of leather in here too, which I think gives it that depth and richness to it. It's so incredibly well blended. My gosh, look at this color. Is this like, is smooth, is smooth. This is stunning. Anyone that smells this, like their jaw drops. So if you have not gotten your hands on this yet, again, highly, highly recommend Les Indemodables Havan, uh, Vinny Havan. Number one, <sighs> number one is a new release and blew my socks off. Number one is by Fragrance Dubois. I got the new discovery kit of, thank you to them for sending this to me, of all their new releases. This one has uh, the six in it. So you have the Demi's, Minuet de Demi, which has been out, PM by producer Michael, which I absolutely love. Uh, Secret Tryst and Cavort from the Lovers Collection, and then also Solstice and London Spice. Now, there was first London Oud, and I absolutely loved London Oud. I was tempted to buy it myself. I did a video on that like a year ago, but the dry down with that Oud, it was just um, too masculine for me, and I, you know, these are the same notes. They pulled out the Oud. It's the same notes rebalanced because obviously you can't just pull a note out. It kind of like knocks it off its balance. Rebalance this, reworked it, massage it a little, and it's incredible. This one is in the Fashion Capitals collection. It opens with lemon, bergamot, and spearmint. And whenever I see a mint, I, I kind of cringe a little bit. I'm like, oh God, mint. Oh gosh, let me brace myself for this. But it's actually a really smooth spearmint that blends with that bergamot really well. They, they pulled it off. It's not like you just popped a piece of gum in your mouth with this like jar or a mint in your mouth, this jarring spearmint. It's smooth. And I find spearmint of all the mints to be the smoothest too. And then that lavender sneaks through and you get this kind of um, a fougere kind of feel from this right away where it's like this, I love a fougere on a man. I think there's something very masculine and clean smelling about it. Something very classic, gentlemanly. And this one is, oh, this is like, this one really blew my socks off. I'm not kidding. Like this one, I was like, okay, that is a very polished, well-to-do man right there. This one, he's, he's, he's dressed sharp. This man does not know how to not dress sharp. He's in a really nice, fine Italian suit. And he smells like this. He smells like a million bucks. You do get these florals coming through. Um, I get some white florals. Uh, and there's something like airy in here. There's something very, um, There's a very cool and airy kind of feel to it. And it's, it dries down and you get a little bit more of this woodiness coming through at the dry down, but it keeps that Fougere kind of feel to it, but it gives me that vibe. Uh, that lavender in there and those, those aromatics and woods in there, it just, you know, uh, it's got patchouli, cedar, nutmeg, and cardamom in the base. So you get those beautiful, like warm spices coming through where you have the top of the lavender and spearmint and those airy notes in there that it kind of balances a little bit. It goes from this really high, fresh, 
and then settles down to a little bit more woodier and denser kind of fragrance. And it is so incredibly sharp. I really, really want a full bottle of this. I loved London Oud, but the way it dried down, I was like, I can't, I, you know, I, mm. there was just something keeping me from getting that one. But this one, I'm like, yes, yes, and yes, this is the version. This is the one I absolutely love. This is my number one pick for men, period. Like, period. Yes, I know, I have expensive taste. This one's worth it. There's something so classy and elegant about how they did this and how it's blended and they nailed the balance on this. This is one you're gonna stand out with. You'll, you'll definitely stand out as sometimes you just smell something and you're like, that smells elegant. That, that smells like a million bucks. Like this is one of them. This is where you're like, you know what? He smells expensive. Like that's this. And that's the difference in the details. I always, always say that. The difference is in the details. That's how you can tell adequate from exceptional. And I don't care what it is. I don't care if we're talking about the details on a car from functionality to luxurious, or if we're talking about your dentist, if we're talking about carpentry, if we're talking about welding, the difference is always in the details. Same with artwork. That's the difference between adequate and exceptional. And the way they did this, the ingredients they chose and the way it's blended is stunning. It's all in the details and it, the end result is beautiful. I'm in love with this. I really am in love with this. I got to get a bottle of that. I'm not kidding. That is my top 15. They really are winners. Um, and everybody always wants to know my opinion on a man. And there you have it. I'll see you guys in the next one. Mwah.